Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you're new here today. So in today's video, I'm going to share with you how I transformed this TV stand into a more up-to-date farmhouse look. I am so excited to share this with you because I've gotten a ton of questions on painting this particular type of material and what products to use, so I'm going to share all that with you today in this video. I hope that this video inspires you to paint that piece of furniture that you've had laying around that just needs some new life brought to it. But I hope you guys enjoy, and I'm going to go ahead and get started. Okay, so right here I'm just doing a little bit of prep work. I'm taping off the glass, and then I am going to remove the doors and all the hardware. And I'm also going to do a little bit of wood filling and sanding. And one of the most asked questions I get is if you have to sand down the entire furniture piece before you paint. And with chalk paint, you don't have to. Luckily, chalk paint, you can pretty much paint with very minimal prep work. That's why I love it. Um, I'm not a fan of sanding. I've mentioned this plenty of times before. I only sand the areas that absolutely need it. So if I would fill, I sand those areas. And I also try to hit any areas that um, have some peeling or chipping because I don't want that to affect the finish, you know, the finished product. So I sand those areas and then I just start painting. And I always make sure to seal my project well. That's probably the most important part if you are using chalk paint is how you seal it. Um, if you want it to last, that part is the most important. Okay, so for today's project, I am using the Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the color Linen White. I did pick this up from Walmart, and I also grabbed this nifty little hand painter. This thing is a lifesaver. If you have arthritis, I highly, highly recommend using one of these. It saves your wrist and makes painting so much faster. So I will link it below if I can find it um, or one similar. I also recommend having a wet towel or some baby wipes on hand just in case you have any spills. If you're a messy painter like me... You need to have something on hand to wipe up paint in case you get any drips. Um, I did have a tablecloth laid out that I picked up from Walmart for like 98 cent, but even with the tablecloth, I still have a few messes. So I always make sure I have something to clean up as I go. And you'll see that this just, like, look how fast this goes with this little hand painter. This thing is amazing. I love it. I cannot believe that it took me so long to discover this. I wasn't joking with you guys when I said that I was a messy painter, and apparently I like to paint with my hair too, <laughs> um, but I literally get paint everywhere. From a distance, it looks like I'm a clean painter, but I promise y'all, I left there with more paint on my skin and in my hair than on this piece of furniture, but <laughs> anyway, um, also I wanted to point out, do y'all see what's happening in that first little cubby hole? There are some areas where the paint was not sticking, and I'm going to keep painting and show you guys how I fixed it and what I did to just work with it because this had never happened to me before and I if this ever happens to you hopefully what I did will work for you too
All right, so at this point, um, this is what the first coat looks like, and I wanted to give you an up-close look of how those areas were looking where the paint wasn't sticking. I eventually figured out that it was probably because my sister-in-law used a pledge on this um, you know, TV stand to clean it, and some of the areas we didn't wipe clean enough, so the paint was not wanting to stick. What I did was I just kept painting it. I was not fixing to give up. I figured if I did a few more light coats, eventually this chalk paint would stick. And it did, and it worked. I really hope that it works for you if that ever happens, but this is why it's so important to make sure the surface is really clean. And unfortunately, we failed a little bit when it came to that, but I improvised. I just kept painting, and sometimes you just got to roll with it and just see what happens. And here is the second coat going on the top. And I'm going to also paint the second coat on the inside of it as well. And you can start to see it really starts to come together and the paint starts sticking really well. By the third coat, it was perfect and it looked really good. Alright, so at this point I had just finished the third coat and I felt like it was at a good enough state to go ahead and start distressing. And what I like to use to distress is a wet microfiber cloth. This has been the easiest method for me and I just very gently rub back and forth until some of the paint rubs off. It gives a very naturally distressed look and... I, I just love this method. I use this exact same technique on my hutch when I redid that. If you want to check that video out, I will link it below. I think that I'm going to hiding Somewhere by a gate it's Baby, they ain't never gonna find me I'm a renegade oh. I could be the one who saved you from this I'm playing We could be as one and we'll escape We could run away, we don't gotta stay I can feel it, it burns inside me Take away the pain, we can go insane I can feel it, it burns inside me We could run away, we don't gotta stay I can feel it, it burns inside me Take away the pain, we can go insane Trust me, I won't let you down All right, so moving on to the top of the TV stand, I'm going to distress this as well. And for me personally, this is a little bit more challenging because you want it to look really natural. And when you're working with a larger surface, it's hard to make it look natural. You don't want it to look like tiger stripes, but um, you also don't want to under distress and it not match the top or the front. So I kind of just eyeball it and just do the best I can. If I need to paint over some areas, I do that as well. And I also scrubbed a little too hard in a few areas on top of the TV stand because I felt like the top of the TV stand was harder for me to get the chalk paint off. Um, and you can see right here, I went a little too heavy handed and I scrubbed the paint off too much. So what I do is I just paint over it a few times, let that dry, and I just start over. Um, anything can be fixed. So don't panic if you mess up, just paint over it, let that fully dry. You might have to do two to three coats on it again. Um, but while you're working on other areas, just you know gently paint over that and while it's drying just keep going on the rest of your project we could be the one who saved you from this our place we could be as one and we'll escape we could run away we don't gotta stay i can feel it it burns inside me take away the pain we can go insane i can feel it it burns inside me we could run away we don't gotta stay i can feel it it burns inside me 
right, so at this point, I added the shelves back in there, and my sister-in-law and I both really love the way it looked without the doors on it. Instead of adding those back and kind of closing it back off, we just liked how it looked open. It just really changed the look of the TV stand. So I quickly wood filled these little holes, and while I was working on, you know, touching up paint on other areas, that was drying, and then I will sand those areas down, repaint those, and continue to distress, and then I'll work on sealing it in just a little bit. All right, so to seal my project, I'm using the Minwax Polycrylic in the clear semi-gloss finish, and I like to use a paintbrush to apply this, and I do very thin coats. Um, so it really depends on which, you know, what piece I'm working on and how many coats I do. For this particular TV stand, I only did three coats of sealant. So I also wanted to mention that I do sand in between each coat of the poly. I make sure that it's fully dry and I just use the finest sandpaper that I can find. I just gently sand it down. You don't want to be rough, very, very light handed. I just, you know, sand it down gently and then I wipe it clean using a microfiber cloth to pick up any dust and then I do another coat of sealant. I forgot to mention that earlier, but make sure that you are sanding in between. This really gives a solid, really good finish. Alright y'all, it's time for my favorite part of all these projects, the before and afters. So here's a quick reminder how it looked before and this is what it looks like now. All right, y'all, that's going to be it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching today. If you enjoyed, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed before you leave. And I will see y'all in my next video. Bye.